The dry start method. What is it and why would you use it? In this video, I'll take you through the steps and then you can see me use it in action. Before we start, don't forget to subscribe for more aquarium goodness and please like and share my videos if it helped you in any way. And don't forget, you can always support this channel by buying a t-shirt, link down below. What is a dry start method? DSM is a method that has been around for a while. The purpose of this method originally was mainly for those attempting to create an ooey gumi style tank. However, it could be used for any tank setup in which you wish to create a lush carpet. This is the main intention for the method when it was created. The concept is simple. Grow a lush carpet using plants that could be grown immersed so it could take hold of the substrate. Then after four to eight weeks, the tank can be flooded. This makes growing a carpet simple without the hassle of trying to plant clumps underwater. If you have ever done so, you will understand the trials and tribulation of trying to keep the clumps from floating away in the substrate. Please understand that all plants can be grown immersed. The most common carpeting plant that you'll hear used in this method is HC, also known as Dwarf Baby Tears. Java Moss, and I know from experience, also works. Other plants that I've heard works with this method is Glossostigmia and Hairgrass. But hey, remember, a simple search on Google will tell you the aquatic plants that can be grown immersed. There are some great advantages of using this method when growing your carpet. During this period, there's no algae problems to worry about. It's easy to plant can even be considered cheaper as you could literally start with one pot of HC and let it grow in during this period. There's also the concept of not needing to cycle the tank. The cycling is supposedly happening during this period. This I'm a little skeptical about, but according to Tom Barr, he who have created this method, the concept is sound. If you understand the concept of cycling, and I hope you do, it is that you need ammonia to jumpstart the cycle. Where would this come from? You will come across this question and there's one thing that you have to remember. DSM was created with the assumption that you're using ADA aqua soil. ADA aqua soil, if you didn't know already, contains NH4. So during this four to eight weeks period, your plants are cycling the substrate. When you're ready to flood the tank, you should already have a nice source of bacteria in the substrate to filter the water and quickly establish the colony in your filter. Let's talk about execution. First, what you will need to start. You will need a tank, of course. You will need nutrient-rich substrate. I'm mainly talking about ADA aqua soil here. However, if there are products out there that carries the same nutrients in their substrate, I don't see why you can't use that. In fact, I toyed with the idea of using soil. Now a side note, I've heard people using inert substrate products and then adding nutrients in the water that they used to mist the plants during the DSM process. I don't know if that works, but it might be something that you want to research more about if you're interested. You need your hardscape up front. Once you lay down your substrate, you will design and place down the hardscape. You will need the carpeting plant as well as any other plants you wish to plant for this four to eight weeks period. You will need saran wrap to cover the tank to create a humid environment. Later you will see that I didn't use saran wrap but rather the tank cover instead. You will need your lighting. Lighting will be the same lighting you'll be using when the tank is flooded. You have the same requirements as you would for the plants and type of tank that you are building. During this period, I had the lights on for 10 hours a day. Finally, you need a spray bottle for misting your plants every day during the process. Everything else you get while you're growing out your carpet. This includes the filter, the heater, CO2 setup, etc. And finally, before we get into it, I want to talk quickly about what happens after you flood your tank. After the four to eight week periods up, you will flood your tank and hook everything up. When this happens, you have to do a couple of things first. First, you have to trim the carpet. This ensures the light gets to the roots so they don't rot out. Also, don't forget that when you flood your tank, the water diminishes the intensity of the lighting that's getting to your substrate. Second, you start pumping CO2 in your tank at a high rate. When growing your plants immersed, there's usually an abundance of CO2 available for them to grow from the oxygen exchange. Once you flood your tank, that source is gone, so you need to compensate with a high rate of CO2 injections and then slowly lower it over the course of a few weeks. And some final notes. Once you flood your tank, I'd wait a day or two and then test your waters. If it looks like the tank is cycled, you can start adding fish. I've seen people who use this method just dump tons of fish all in at once. I would suggest just adding them slowly, but at the end of the day, do what makes you feel comfortable. Well, let's get to it. Here's what I did to start my 20 gallon long Iwagumi style tank using the dry start method. For this build, I'm using a 20 gallon long tank I picked up from one of the big box stores at the $1 a gallon sale. I'm using the ADA 3 layer substrate system in which to first lay down the ADA power special substrate. I keep this layer in the middle of the tank away from the side and front edges. 
Note that I didn't bother with all the powders as I find it a bit costly. The next layer I laid down is standard ADA aqua soil. During this layer I create a slope starting from the front with about 1 inches sloping up to the back which ended at about 1.5 inches. At this point, it's time to design the hardscape. I read up on the Iwigumi concept and how the layout should be designed, starting with the Uya Ishi, the focal point. I ended up moving this primary rock around until I found the right balance. Now, as you watch this, I start moving things around. After a long while of laying down what I think is supposed to be the way it's done, I ended up just going off the rails and did what I thought looked good while trying to keep with the concept. Creating a Iwigumi tank is supposed to promote serenity and balance. Unfortunately, after finagling with the rocks for 40 minutes, all it did was promote the rage of me wanting to punch a duck. If you ask anyone who knows me, it is that I'm not the kind of guy that goes with the flow. To get ahead, to stand out, you must go against the grain. That's the Zen Chung philosophy. Never go where the wind takes you. You must make the wind take you where you want to go. If all else fails, just call an Uber. You know, it's wise words because it sounds zen, and I'm Asian. Once I had the hardscape in place, I laid down a thin layer of ADA power sand. Once the sand is smoothed out, I sprayed down the substrate to dampen the surface. This will make planting easy. I bought around 5 pots of HC, but in retrospect, I could have done with just 3 pots. If I wanted to save money and go longer on the immersive period, I could have just taken one pot and grown the carpet out that way. After the carpet was planted, I did a quick spray to keep the HC moist. I took some java moss and minced it up using a kitchen knife. I just pretended I was chopping cilantro for guacamole. Soaking it in water, I painted the mixture on with a brush on the rocks of where I want the java moss to grow. Once I was done applying the java moss, I filled the tank up with water. The water should only come up just below the lowest point of the substrate. At this point, I would saran wrap the tank leaving only a sliver of an opening for air exchange. This opening shouldn't be too big where the tank can't build humidity. I used my tank cover instead and left a small crack in the back with the plastic filler piece that you would normally cut out to hang equipment through. Then I installed the lighting. Here I'm using the Phoenix Planet Plus. This is more than enough lighting for a tank this tall, giving a high enough par rating at the substrate level to grow high demanding light plants like the HC. Now we start the immersive growth period. During this period, I had the lights on a timer for about 10 hours a day. Every morning I would give the tank a good misting, just enough to see water droplets on the leaves and to keep the tank humid. Since this is in my living area, it's usually warm enough to keep a nice level of humidity in the tank. I'll show you the rates of growth between weekly periods. Now note between week 2 and 3, I siphoned some water out as I noticed the water level was just a bit too high.
between week five and six, there seems to be a growth period. I'm not sure if there was some kind of kick-in period for the HC growth. I decided to wait an extra week. At week 9, I decided to flood the tank. First, I sporadically planted some dwarf hair grass at the edge lines of the rocks. I also decided to plant dwarf Sagittaria in some places as well. After this, I started to add water to the top of the tank. After adding the water to the top of the tank, I planted giant hair grass on both back corners of the tank. Once that was done, I hooked up all the equipment. The heater is a 50 watt heater. I opted for glass lily pipes for the inflows and outflows of the filter. I'm using an inline CO2 diffuser as well. I'm using the EXT inline pump that runs the Sun Sun 602 that utilizes bio and mechanical media. For CO2, I'm running an Aquatech CO2 regulator on a paintball tank, but I later switched that to a five pound tank on an eBay cheap regulator split into this tank and the 40 gallon tank below the shelf. Since I wasn't going to put in livestock right away, I was running the CO2 about seven bubbles per second. I slowly lowered it down in the next two weeks until I got it to the level where the plants were satisfied with it. Once the equipment was installed, I gave the carpet a trim. On hindsight, I should have trimmed it a bit more as five weeks after the flooding, the roots were rotting in various places. After trimming, I went ahead and took advantage of doing a 90% water change to cycle out any junk that might have been left over from the immersive growth period, as well as to clear out some of the trimmings. And here's the tank after everything's done. Now after flooding, you have to expect dieback. At two weeks after flooding, I did a 50% water change and just went from there. If you watched my previous videos, this tank got infected with green slime algae about 6 weeks after the flooding and because my life got so hectic, I let the tank go. But I plan to try it again and maybe I will try it with soil this time. I'll be sure to log that project as well. Well, there you guys have it, the dry start method. It's actually easy to do and for me a fun experiment. This works great on a nano tank too, so if you want to give it a try and save some money, start on something small. Don't forget, you can support the channel by buying a t-shirt. Again, thanks for watching, and remember, like if you like, sub if you haven't, and share where you can. This is Chung, and I'm out of here. I'll see you in the next video.